Thank you so much, uh, Professor Husni. As usual, excellent, uh, very simplified, and up to the point. Thank you so much, Professor Ilham, for this very good lecture. And now to Professor Shirin Rada to read the discussion. Uh, thank you, Professor Ilham Hosni. It's really very uh, interesting topic, very uh, updated, and uh, we really enjoyed the treatment. We have a lot of questions, uh, which means that the audience were interested in the topic too. Um, uh, the first question is about uh, how to suspect acute abdominal pain due to hereditary angioedema clinically. So this is, I think, for uh, Dr. Rasha. Uh, yes, uh, concerning the attacks of abdominal pain, uh, recurrent attacks of abdominal pain, that they are not responsive to treatment, and there is no, no explanation for these attacks. And the attacks are febrile, as Professor Elham mentioned. The, we should suspect uh, the, the hereditary angioedema, especially also if there is attacks of cutaneous angioedema and post-family history. However, these, the cutaneous angioedema or post-family history, if they are not present, we should not also exclude the diagnosis. And uh, if we uh, proceed to radiology, we will find by ultrasound or uh, CT scans, there is only a uh, situs or uh, submucosal edema, but no evidence that can explain the attacks of abdominal pain as regard the surgical or infectious causes. Okay. And uh, um, last point is that uh, the, there's, uh, we, we may proceed in some cases that we cannot reach a definitive diagnosis, we can, as Professor Elham said, we can do the C4 during the attacks. And in some cases, even if C4 is normal, we can give the C1 inhibitor uh, infusion during the attack and to see the therapeutic response. But this is the last resort we can use. Uh, okay, thank you, Professor Rasha. The second question is about any role of therapeutic tests to diagnose angioedema like FMF. Do you have any uh, therapeutic test I think the investigations are, are enough. Yes, uh, if you have uh, the abdominal pain without fever, then it is not FMF usually, usually. It's very rare to have FMF without fever. It's mm -hmm. a periodic fever by the abdominal pain. But if you have abdominal pain, as Russia said, unexplained and febrile attacks, you need to do a C4. It will help you a lot. It's a good screening test in, this, in that case. Definitely. So uh, the, uh, there is another interesting question. How effective is danazole in the long uh, and short term prophylaxis uh, on our cases, provided that we give patients danazole? Yes, we have a good um, uh, results of danazole. should admit this. It's used for many, many years and it gives good results. But the, the, the profile of the drug is not insured. That's why we have a wait and see uh, policy in our unit. We do not give to every child just because he had hereditary angioedema. Only severe cases who have um, uh, frequent attacks, then we have to resort to the drug. This, and, we, and of course, we, get, we have an informed consent from the parents before we give it. That's okay. Thank you, Dr. Ilham. Another interesting question is about the fresh frozen plasma supplies the missing factor. Could this make it allerg allergenic to the deficient recipient? It's analog to the IgE deficiency, and then you give the uh, IVIG with some um, residue of the uh, IgA. I need um, any possibility to make antibodies against the uh, fresh frozen plasma, the, the, the factor itself, the deficient factor? If this is the case, and even the C1 inhibitor, if you give it to the patient, the patient will make antibodies against the C1 inhibitor. But this is not recorded in literature uh, for the fresh frozen plasma. Because the, the, even the amount of C1 inhibitor in the fresh frozen plasma is variable, and it's not a, a high um, a concentration. That's why the patient takes time till he develops improvement from the fresh frozen plasma. So we didn't see this, but the fresh frozen safety profile is all the problem because of the uh, danger of uh, virus C transmission or HIV or cytomegalovirus. Yeah, definitely. So the other question is uh, about 
um, just a note that the use of uh, tyrannic mimic acid is increasingly recognized in bleeding disorders. This is one of our colleagues in the hematology, <laughs> Professor Anza Abdegawad, and used in pediatric and adult hematology with marked safety. So it is safer. She means that it is a safe drug to be used for pediatrics. But here in hereditary angioedema, they delay the age of approval to be used uh, after the age of six years. So what's the, the rationale? Yeah. This is a very good question, really, because tranexamic acid, uh, the safety profile now is considered by the FDA to be better than the danazole, and that uh, the approval is at a younger age than danazole. But to tell you the truth, long-term prophylaxis before the age of six years usually is not required except in very rare cases in children. Most children, usually, we start the long-term prophylaxis beyond the age of six years. So we have no problem to give the tranexamic acid, uh, but we have to monitor the muscles um, in the, of the growing child, whether he's going to develop the myositis and the C, by the CPK enzyme level. So it's a very good question, really. Okay, this is, these are the old questions that we received, but uh, I have a question. <laughs> uh, why every all the the treatments are uh, FDA approved for the age above six years, or between the age and six and twelve for adolescent, but for uh, children it's usually above the age of six years. Uh, I think that from what Russia presented to us, that some patients present with pictures similar to croup. Uh, asphyxiated in the emergency room or acute abdominal pain in some uh, cases. So I think that in pediatrics, maybe it is not um, well diagnosed or well, uh, there is lack of awareness about how to uh, pick up cases with hereditary angioedema. And that's why maybe the, uh, the studies didn't include uh, much children. So the, or what is your opinion on that? Uh, the EMA gave uh, approval of most medications starting from the two from of age. Usually the FDA standards are more difficult than the EMA. The FDA wants meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, but the EMA takes even one randomized controlled trial to give to a medication. That's why we should not, we, 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 we have the two agencies. We don't have to resort to the FDA and everything, we can take the EMA. It's a respectable uh, organization in these cases so mm -hmm. that we can save lives of children. But, uh, there are trials going uh, on and I expect that the FDA will give approval later on. Okay, and we you. still have other options. Okay, thank you. I have another question for Professor Dr. Zina Bawak. I want to ask her about the incidence of hereditary angioedema, do we have any, uh, um, let's say, figures about the incidence of uh, hereditary angioedema, not only in children, but in adults in our country or uh, uh, the neighbors uh, around us? How many do we have? And if there is any registry for the hereditary angioedema worldwide? Well, uh, in general, the uh, incidence for hereditary angioedema <clears throat> the, the, it's recorded to occur in one in 10,000, up to one in 10,000 individuals, uh, and as, as low as one in 50,000. In Egypt, we don't have registry, unfortunately, um, and um, perhaps we should start this, uh, and we should uh, take the lead in this, uh, in this regard. Yes, definitely, because uh, uh, it reminded me with the case which we have with the FMF, and she resisted to all kinds of treatment, colchicine, uh, uh, ev all the treatment we used, and she has still abdominal colic, abdominal pain, which are on and off. And the mother is not accurate in giving uh, accurate history regarding the, the, uh, the occurrence of fever. So I think that this case, maybe after this yes. webinar, I agree, okay. Professor Shireen, that we need, we need to conduct epidemiological studies. At this stage, we should concentrate in Egypt uh, on the epidemiological studies, surveys, 
to do yeah. surveys, to conduct surveys in order to know, uh, perhaps just survey on a family history. This will be enough for us to discover cases. Uh, let's, let's, I, I'm just suggesting to make um, a joint work uh, in several universities to um, survey for family history of angioedema in order to screen the children and to see if, the, if we have cases of angioedema. It will be a very simple study. You will just uh, take history from as many uh, thousands of patients in each university. And from this, you will pick up very few number, one in 10,000 or one in 50,000 that have a family history of angioedema. And in that case, you will uh, investigate the case by doing the C4 and the C1 strays and see if the, we have cases or not. So I think we have many of our colleagues from different universities now are- oh, I suggested now, I suggested so, research and, now, uh, and I suggest uh, the Trasha, uh, Trasha uh, and Dr. Dalia to take uh, the lead to start to put the survey and let's work on this together. Yes, it will be great. Um, now for Dalia, Professor Dalia Hosni, uh, Dalia Al Gunemi, can I ask Al question, another question or I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, about the classification? How would you apply this classification in 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 the in terms of uh, investigations? <clears throat> Uh, dear Dr. Shirin, in terms of classification, if we have the patient uh, with the family history or with uh, um, as a matter of screening or he himself has recurrent attacks of angioedema, first is uh, to measure the C4, as Dr. Shirin, as Dr. Ilham said, and to see the C1 strays uh, inhibitor level and function. Uh, if the patient have normal uh, C1 uh, strays inhibitor level and function. Um, the issue is this patient is in the category of uh, uh, hereditary angioedema with normal uh, C1 strays inhibitor. Uh, this patient, if we have next generation sequencing, uh, first to uh, test for the identified mutation already recognized in this category of patient, we have to proceed for genetic sequencing. And this is especially even in families with um, yani, um, um, history suggestive of hereditary angioedema with normal, with uh, decreased C1 inhibitor in the first age of life because the complement level in this young age is unreliable. It right. can be low, but it is not low. Yeah. So to make sure this uh, infant is affected or not, and we see that Rosa uh, said in her the clinical presentation that a very young age could be affected up during the first year of life, this category of patients deserve genetic sequencing. If next generation sequencing does not um, elucidate the already recognized uh, genetic mutation, we have to proceed to whole exome sequencing because this would uh, be better for uh, diagnosis and management of this patient and save time and avoid um, a high risk of mortality in, for this disorder. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sully. Professor uh, Yahel Gamal, my professor, my dear. Yes, uh, I, uh, at the end, I would like to thank my the co-chair, Professor Shireen Reda, the excellent speakers we have here to, tonight, and all the participants, and I hope that we, they have enjoyed uh, a good, fruitful time with us. Also, I would like to uh, thank so much Takeda and barcode for the, arrang the arrangements done. And I hope to see you all uh, soon in such uh, fruitful, useful meetings. Thank you so much and see you, see you soon, inshallah. Thank you, Professor Yahya Gamal. Thank you, Dr. Yahya. Thank you, Dr. And all the attendees here, my dear professors, colleagues, and students, uh, I hope you enjoyed a lot this uh, meeting with distinguished speakers. And uh, I'd like to thank Takeda for hosting a very, very nice webinar. Uh, and I hope next time we'll meet face to face uh, with all our okay. colleagues. Uh, thank you very much. And I, and I would like to thank Barcode for the excellent, they have done a wonderful job.
and barcode. Uh, before we close, we have a survey and we need to, uh, to answer the survey. I hope that uh, barcode will uh, put it on the screen. So just your, uh, it's, it's just a short survey for uh, your opinion.